If money were no object, what camera would you buy? The GFX 100S that I'm recording with right now, that's what this gesture was all about, sorry. <laughs> it was a little bit early. Anyway, the GFX 100S from Fujifilm is probably my top three, top two dream cameras. We've been using it for a little while now, so I thought it was time to put some thoughts together. So yeah, let's crack on. It's not even a beast anymore. I mean, you've got that beautiful 102 megapixel BSI CMOS 44 by 33 medium format sensor. There'll be no arguments about what's medium format and what's not. Here, thank you very much. There's an image stabilization system up to six stops, 4K video up to 30 frames per second with HDMI output. I beg your pardon, on this side, and that's up to 10 bits, 422 or 12-bit raw footage. So although we say these things aren't really tuned for video, it's more the autofocus that isn't quite tuned with some of the GF lenses. The actual camera itself seems to be well set up for some very nice 4K footage, and everything I've seen and done so far definitely attests to that. As you can see, we've got the USB port, which you can charge from too, and we've got another power port there too. And then if we flick open here, the mic and the headphone slots nice 3.5 mil. Nice cover there. In fact, the GFX logo, you'll note, is really the only thing telling you what body this is. Nothing that says GFX 100S. If you don't know, you don't know. As you know, I like to black out my gear just for personal taste and discretion in some circumstances, and that would be the only place I would need to do it. That is absolutely nice. I do like this grip. It's fairly deep. It's well molded. It's very usable. If we flick open here, we can see we've got twin UHS-2 card slots and it locks nicely. On the back, we've got a nice big rear touch screen display, and you do have the ever popular two axis tilt. No flippy on this one, which will please a lot of people. We've got this four-way joystick, AE lock, menu, display, back, play, AF there. You switch on this side to go between shutter continuous and manual, your bin and your drive mode over here. The menu system itself is very familiar. Probably shouldn't have pressed the <laughs> shutter button there. Right, at least that didn't take too long. Menus, very familiar to Fujifilm shooters. You know, they're pretty easy to get around. You'll have no bother there, I should imagine. Especially at this level, you know, it's quite easy to get to the important settings. You can customize a lot of the functions that you need. We've got this fixed built-in viewfinder too. Very decent power on that. Now on the top is where some of the fun really lies. You'll see that we haven't got certain dials on this one to cut down the size, but we do have a programmable, customizable top display here. And I do like the histogram feature, which if I had a lens on, you would see a little bit more going on there. Now, if we press here, we've got a lot more information. Very, very cool. If I press again, you've got basically what would be dials. Now, I haven't got a lens in place to be able to mess about with it too much, but it is very cool. And as you can see, you can light it up. Do like that a lot, something I don't get on my T bodies. Let's see what the H2 brings when that comes along. Let me just pop that back to the one that I'm most keen on in general use, but as I say, the Instagram is a really cool feature. The dial over here, of course, you can lock it, and you've got a movie still switch there. Not sure if that system is as well implemented as with the T4, but not sure it needs to be either. Inside this, we have got continuous shooting up to five frames per second with 
continuous autofocus. And there's a crazy multi-shot 400 megapixel mode for static subjects, which may appeal to some of you. On the flip side, we do have maybe a bit of a, a negative for some, the W235 battery, which of course I've got for my T4, and it's kind of more suited for the T4, but just to cut down on size, that's what you're getting with this, rated at 460 shots. If I'm perfectly honest, I got a lot more than that. As I find I get with the T4 too, I got way more than 460 off one battery. What was it now? I think I got easily over a thousand frames. 1700 frames using film simulation, something like that. Basically, carry spares, it's not that bad, but you know, for the nature of this camera, we'll see what technology does with future iterations. And I'm not talking about the newer 50S2. The camera itself weighs 900 grams. So in real use, and we'll talk about it a bit later on, it's just not that far off, you know, a DSLR or even some of the slightly bigger, very popular full frame bodies. This does retail around £5,499 though. So, you know, it's definitely not for everybody. You can't get a grip by the way. So that's the battery that you're gonna be living with as I said, carry spares. This Q button on the back, I have been knocking it a bit um, unwittingly. Maybe you can disable that, but I've, I've been okay with it. I, it's it's triggered when I've been shooting out and about, but I've just soft shot. Talking about the shutter, that is a really beautiful soft shutter. Maybe we'll show that off in a bit too, but yeah, it is a really, really cool thing. And for what it has inside, it's not that big at all. Of all the GFX bodies that I've used, this is my favorite. I've got a lot of experience using DSLRs and bigger setups than a lot of us mirrorless shooters use nowadays. So the size of this camera doesn't feel particularly huge, especially when you consider what it packs in. As far as the build quality goes, it's first rate from Fujifilm, but let us know if you've had any issues with it after long term use. That's something that I can't personally comment on so it'll be good to hear from you in the comments below. I find the camera handles very well and everything that I need is easy to work with right down to that nice quiet shutter button. Coming from the X series range it's pretty easy to switch over to this camera. Now there are a few obvious differences with the button layout on the top for example but nothing to make it feel completely alien to an experienced or fairly experienced Fujifilm shooter or indeed a photographer with experience full stop. Naturally, your fit might be different, so it's wise to get your hands on it first. Let us know in the comments how you feel about it on this front. <laughs> When it comes to talking about the phase detection autofocus, you've got to be realistic. It's probably got the best autofocus performance in a medium 
format camera at the moment, give or take. While it's not perfect, it is generally very usable, especially for its intended purpose, including face and eye detection. But this is more dependent on the lens itself. There's definite room for improvement, but you know, all signs are very good. Now, even in JPEG shooting, the color and detail retention is brilliant. So you can imagine how good the raw files are from this 102 megapixel sensor. You get an excellent high ISO performance and the dynamic range is as good as the GFX 100. Ultimately, it's possibly giving the best image quality at this price. And out of respect, I'm gonna put this back on. <laughs> Video shooting is really excellent. The camera shoots with the full sensor width with the height cropped to conform to either 16 to 9 or 17 to 9. The intro was shot with it, of course, and while it's overkill for that kind of video, it worked really well, I think. Now, in the right hands, some really cool video could be shot with this camera. And that's considering it's not really designed with video in mind, but it's effectively carrying all that's good about the X-T4 video spec and that's brilliant for a camera of this nature. Finally, I love the inclusion of IBIS with this. It works a treat. It really did make it feel so much closer to shooting out and about with my X-T4 than I would have expected. Now, if I was into big gear and I wanted to spend the money, I needed that sensor, this could easily replace my X-T4, give or take a bit of analysis that would need to take place before I took that step. I do love this camera that much. Yes, it might not be a speed freak, but for those of us that used to work with all manual film gear, I think anything that came after that was a bonus and we're happy with most modern focusing systems for regular pace shoots. That is, this, I guess, is more designed for studio and landscape work, but it's now easily capable for weddings, events, you know, not so slow paced stuff. And, you know, again, this is coming from somebody who shot a long time on much, much slower gear, in my case, going back to the 90s. On the minor side, a quick shout out to the lack of D-pad. Personally, I'd have found that much more usable, but there you go. Maybe firmware updates, what, 8.0 will be able to sort that out, right? Also, that tube button is a bit annoying in default mode. And battery life, well, it's mirrorless battery life. And I found on a regular shoot, it was fine, but carry spares if you're doing anything important or particularly shot intensive. 5,499 pounds for a 102 megapixel medium format camera with superb IQ, excellent dynamic range, high ISO performance, 
and the typical Fujifilm color magic and you know very usable 4k video twin card slots that handy top screen that shutter all the good stuff that makes it sound like a sales pitch which it's not yeah the list goes on I am a little bit besotted with this thing <laughs> but more importantly over to you what do you like about this camera or what don't you like about it if you've used it for some time let us know in the comments below and i'll see you there